everybody. Welcome back. To those of you who are familiar with my channel, welcome back. To those of uh, to the Camaro guys who may be new to my channel, uh, welcome to uh, the first installment of a uh, complete set of videos that I'll be producing uh, during a during the restoration of my '69 Camaro Z28. As I do on my motorcycles, I'm going to go step by step. Uh, with the uh, restoration process of this car and uh, <clears throat> every step will be videoed and posted so you'll see uh, the entire restoration process of the car so to start off in this first video I'm showing pictures of the car when I first bought it and it was mainly a rust-free car uh, mostly original paint um, and as you can see here in the pictures, uh, this is exactly the way that I got the car a couple of years ago. So um, anyway, I will be going through uh, each step of the disassembly here, and I'm going to be going through all the parts and pieces that, I, that came with the car and others that I have obtained since. So to start off with the Caltag, as you can see here, uh, it's an X. It's an original X77 car, which is Z28 only to those of uh, you who know. And it's Le Mans blue top, Le Mans blue bottom, 7171. And uh, I had the NSRS report done, as you can see here. It was built on March 24, 69, sold to uh, Hohen Chevrolet in Memphis, Tennessee. And this is a fact sheet of the car uh, so far with all of my um, day codes and part numbers and so on. So the car does have the original DZ block, uh, which was built um, on March 11th and stamped on March 18th. And it's got the original Muncie 20, uh, M21 transmission and the what I believe is the original rear end, but it was uh, cast in December of 68. So it's a little, little old for the car. But uh, anyway, here are some pictures of the block. As you can see, 6618Z28DZ block cast on March 11th of 69. And the block was uh, stamped on March 18th, as you can see there. And then the rest of these pictures are some more pictures of the car as I received it. Now, I realize the, the, the hood stripes are not correct, but they were painted on. So uh, this car is an original rear antenna car from the factory which means that it could not have come with a rear spoiler. Um, and the cow hood uh, was added at the dealer. So both the cow hood and the rear spoiler were added at the dealer uh, before the car was even sold. So I have talked to the original owner of the car, and that's what he told me. The car was put on the showroom floor, and the dealer had put the cow hood and the uh, rear spoiler on it. So these are um, some of the pictures of some of the existing stuff. Here's the original radiator, date code correct. Uh, here are the original motor mounts, Z28 only, 302 only motor mounts. Here's the uh, Muncie four-speed hole in the firewall. Uh, here are the original headrests, which are dated March of 69. Here's uh, the original door. And there's the uh, Muncie hole again. And then here's the uh, plastic plug uh, on the Muncie four-speed cars only. And then here's the rear bracket for the dual exhaust. This is a picture of me the day that I picked the car up. And then this is a little video of the car being loaded on the trailer when I first bought it. And 
And then these pictures are of some of the disassembly process. Um, I'm skipping around because, you know, I didn't, I, I wasn't diligent on making videos when we were first disassembling the car step by step. But from this point on, um, each step of the, of the process will be uh, videoed and posted. So here I'm showing the, uh, the hidden VIN number underneath the cow with the original white paint for white stripes. And that matches the, uh, the number on the dash. And then some of you may or may not know this, but on the Z28s that were built in Norwood, Ohio, they would put a grease pencil mark on the back behind the seat. And as you can see here, this one is X7 and it stands for X77 cars. So as the cars came down the line, if it was an X33, it would be X3, and if it was X77, it would be an X7. So this is a really good way to verify that you have a real Z. I mean, cow tags can be replaced, but uh, this grease pencil is something that not many people know about. So. Here I took a shot of it with the flash camera so you could see a little bit better. So continuing with the disassembly, <clears throat> disassembly a lot of the body work has been done at this point. The rear quarter panel has been replaced as a skin only, not the entire quarter panel. So it was, uh, <coughs> excuse me, it was just the skins were replaced. So the original door jams and everything are still in place. That's the only sheet metal that's been replaced on the car. All the other sheet metal is original to the car. Original doors, original fenders. Uh, as a matter of fact, like I said, the rear antenna cars, uh, the front, the front passenger side fender had no hole in it for the for the antenna and I do have the original fender on that. So here's the cow hood that was put on the car back in 1969 before the car was even sold. So that's an original early early cow hood. This is a brand new grill. It's not the original grill. Original header panel has been damaged and then that's the original cow panel there. And then here's the original uh, passenger front fender with no hole in it, as you can see. And that's the original lower valance in the front and the original uh, uh, rear um, spoiler that was added to the car before it was sold. And that's you can pretty much see that with the indication of the age of that spoiler with the rust underneath. And then the original GM part number underneath there. Unfortunately, the original trunk lid was stolen off the car at some point unfortunately so the trunk lid has been replaced that's the only sheet other sheet metal that's been replaced so here's some more pictures as the bodywork was being done all the bodywork's done now and uh, the car is pretty much ready to paint at this point not at this point in the video but but currently it's it's pretty close to being ready to paint, and I will document that. And I had the painter match that Le Mans blue on that, on that front cowl that you just saw perfectly, so we're going to get the color correct. Those are the original rally wheels um, as well. They're YH all dated properly. 
No indication of any major damage has ever been done to the car. The only reason the quarters were replaced is because they had rust in the typical spots. The car was uh, mainly in southern Arkansas the entire its entire life. From, a, from just a few months after it was sold, it was sold in Memphis at Hohen Chevrolet, and then in September of 69, it was sold to the gentleman in Arkansas, and the car was in Arkansas until 2018. So it's pretty much been in Arkansas its entire life. Now it's in California. So what we did was on the in the uh, the floorboards were had a whole bunch of pinholes at the bottom quarter, you know, at the lowest point in the floorboards. So we went ahead. I went ahead and bought brand new uh, uh, AM. AMD uh, sheet metal, and we cut out the uh, the sections that had the pinholes in it, as you can see here, and put in the new pieces. The rest of the floor is in really good condition. A lot of the original paint still on them, and that's true underneath as well. So the car had very, very little rust. I mean, the rust that was on those floorboards was mainly due to water leaking in. As you can see here, we're splicing in the, the new sections of the floorboards. Unfortunately, the uh, the shifter hole's been hacked away. Just typical of these cars, you know. When the when the shifter's out of adjustment, they just cut the floor open instead of adjusting the shifter properly. So, I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. I I'm probably going to try to fix that. So as you can see here, they're just we're just finishing splicing these floorboards in, and then uh, you know we put some of the the sealer around there, liberal amount as you can see, that's sealer, not not weld, and then uh, we primered that section, and then I'm just gonna let the uh, the over the blue overspray hit it naturally like it did from the factory. So here what I'm doing is I'm, I'm proving that the uh, cow tag has never been replaced. So I'm focusing in on the VIN tag here, on the VIN uh, number, and then I'm going to show that the camera is going to go underneath the cow here to show that the, that the rivets behind the cow tag have never been touched. And there they are. You can see the original the original uh, caulking coming out of the uh, the rivets there behind, and it's never been tampered with. It's one thing to to check on a car, in my opinion, is you want to check to make sure that those rivets have never been tampered with. And then here's the tag again with the original caulking. So that's pretty much it for this first video, and I would encourage you to keep keep track. You know, please subscribe to my channel, and you'll you'll watch the car get get uh, turned into what will look like this when it's finished. This is a car that's exactly like mine, with the exception of the rear antenna. So uh, again, please stay tuned. Please subscribe, like, and share, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.